Good morning. I'm Morgan Spicer, Special Projects Coordinator with the ARC of the Mid-Ohio Valley. And I am Melissa Southall, Self-Advocate Coordinator for the ARC of the Mid-Ohio Valley and People First. And welcome to another episode of Legislative Matters Now with m M&M. We are glad you are joining us today. To begin with, as we always do, let's explain the purpose of the show. We want to educate self-advocates on the important topic of legislative advocacy in a way that is easier to understand. And we do that by interviewing a guest every month to help explain the topics we discuss. To encourage self-advocates, we also do a segment called Advocate in Action, where we interview a self-advocate who is using their self-advocacy skills to benefit themselves and the people around them in their community. That's right, Morgan. This month is Disability Employment Awareness Month, and while we have already covered the topic of Employment First in previous episode, today's guest will talk about services related to employment for individuals with disabilities, and he will be joining us shortly, but first, it's time to play Who You Gonna Call. It's time to play Who You Gonna Call. Today, our question... You want to find employment in your area, but need some help locating the services that will help you. Who are you going to call? A. Your city council member. B. Your state house of delegates or state senators. C. Your U.S. senator or U.S. congress member. Or D. A state agency that specializes in the area that you're looking for. What do you think, Morgan? I think a state agency is going to help you with that one. How about you, Melissa? I say a state agency that specializes in the area you're looking for. Final answer, Morgan? Final answer. Final answer. The correct answer is a state agency that specializes in the services that you are looking for. While there may be services available in West Virginia to help individuals with disabilities find employment, today we'll be covering one place that assists people finding employment as well as provide other services that can assist you even when you do find work. The West Virginia Division of Rehabilitation Services is a state agency that serves West Virginians with disabilities. The mission of DRS is to enable and empower individuals with disabilities to work and live independently by providing individualized services to consumers and employers. DRS operates two major programs, the Vocational Rehabilitation Program helps people with disabilities get or keep a job. For those who are unable to work, the Disability Determination Section determines eligibility for Social Security Disability Insurance and Supplemental Security Income. See, Melissa, I love doing this show because every episode I'm learning something new about the variety of services we have in West Virginia that helps individual disabilities. Now, as Melissa mentioned earlier, this October is Disability Employment Awareness Month, and today's guest is joining us from the West Virginia Division of Rehabilitation Services. And as Doug said, the West Virginia Depart- Division of Rehabilitation Services is a state agency that serves West Virginians with disabilities. Now, the mission of DRS is to enable and empower individuals with disabilities to work and live independently by providing individualized services to consumers and employers. Today, our guest is Richard Ward, who is a West Virginia Division of Re- Rehabilitation Services Program Specialist. Thank you very much for joining us today. Welcome to the show. Uh, Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We just read your mission of supporting people with disabilities, but how is that mission actually carried out? So, right. We have um, about 29 offices across the state, and we serve all 55 counties in the state of West Virginia. Um, We meet people where they're at. If, If they can't come to our office, we'll meet them anywhere. Um, libraries, uh, we have itinerant offices, DHHR offices, anywhere we can go to meet the consumer, uh, we will be there to to do what we can do to assist them. Um, and, and to answer your question about how the mission is really carried out, there are uh, approximately eight steps in the vocational rehabilitation process. The first step is application. 
that's when you meet with a vocational rehab professional, usually a counselor. Sometimes it may be a, a, what we call rehabilitation service services specialist. And those individuals are, again, like I said, VR professionals. And that gives them a chance to meet with the consumer, the client, to get to know them, to figure out what they want in terms of, of getting and keeping a job. Um, so, again, first step is application. Then and, and during that application process, we get, you know, lots of information, anything from just the basic, uh, you know, where you live at, um, uh, just any kind of demographic information. Uh, we get information about your disabilities or, or what an individual thinks their disability might be. Um, sometimes those can be, be different. Someone may perceive a disability that, that may not be um, exactly what, what they had thought. So anyway, that's just an opportunity to um, get some more information. And then we do, uh, the second step is really a more formal assessment where we collect information from maybe doctors, um, uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, mental health professionals, um, any number of, of places that we might can get information related to the person's um, disability. And so once that information is collected, we will take a look at all of it, put it together. Um, and then that, at that point, the third step in the process is for the counselor to make what we call an eligibility determination. So again, not everyone who applies for, for services uh, will be determined eligible, um, but I think most people that, that do apply for services will be determined eligible as long as we have supporting documentation that says that, yes, they do, in fact, have a, have a disability, a physical or a mental condition that impacts their ability to get and keep employment. So um, then the fourth step in the, in the process is really what we call IPE development. And an IPE is an individualized plan for employment. It's similar to the IEP. Uh, when you're in school, if you have a disability, uh, you have an individualized education plan. Well, our plan is individual individualized for employment. And so that just takes a look at all of the services uh, that the individual might need to get and keep their job. Um, that, that outlines the job goal that the individual wants to achieve. Um, and, and throughout this whole process, the counselor and the client are talking about their skills, their abilities to kind of come to an agreement on, on what is the best job goal. First and foremost, we want to take the, the individual's choices into consideration. You know, we, we want to help individuals achieve the, the job goal that they want to achieve. Um, but there may be some counseling involved in that to help individuals kind of realize their full potential uh, or, or take a look at all of their skills and abilities. Um, so once that plan is developed, then you start moving into the services um, that, that are needed to get and keep that, that uh, job. So it may be training, it, and there are all kinds of different types of training. There's college training, there's vocational training, there's on-the-job training, there's um, work skills training, there's independent living skills training. So whatever training that individual might need to get that job, uh, they may need some type of, of, of treatment, they may need some psychological treatment. They may, may need some physical therapy. They may need some types of medical procedures. They may need um, any kind of a, of a service that, that is agreed upon in that plan to help them move towards that employment goal. Again, all services that we provide are have to be directly related to the employment goal. We're all about employment. Um, so, um, and then once all those services are provided, then that's when you start looking for that job. Now, you know, it's always a good idea to, to look for jobs throughout this process to keep your eyes open for, you know, potential jobs. Uh, you can do that, or the, you know, the client can do that, the counselor can do that. Uh, we have employment specialists who can help with that. So, that's, that's kind of the sixth step in the process is, is gaining that employment, securing that employment. Once that employment is secured, then we're going to move into what we call a follow-up uh, period. And that's usually a period of at least 90 days. It can be longer. It cannot be shorter where the counselor is following along with that individual, making sure that everything is going well on their job, making sure that they've got the services that they need, making sure that um, 
their supervisor is happy making sure that they're doing the best job that they can do. As long as everything is going well, there's no other, no issues noted, no reason that we would need to continue to work with that individual, um, then the case is closed as what we call successfully rehabilitated. So those are really the steps in the rehabilitation process. Um, and I think you mentioned it in your question or when you were reading our mission statement, it says to we help um, individuals work and live independently. And yes. so, yes. Uh, I uh, wanted to touch on that real briefly. Um, our primary focus is employment, but we also do have some some partners we work with to help individuals who who may not want to go to work. Their goal is to live independently. So we're really strong partners with the Centers for Independent Living across the state. And so we support them. And, and I would say to anyone listening, you know, if you're an individual with a disability, who needs some support uh, to live independently on your own, but you're not interested in employment, get in touch with your local center for independent living. Again, they, they, um, they're they across the state and, and they provide wonderful services to help folks uh, with their independent living goals. If people have used your services before and then they need support again, can they come back? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we like we, we talked, we really do our very, very best um, to make sure that it's a good job match, that the person has all the services that they need um, in order to be successful on that job. And that's our primary goal. We want to make sure that the job is a, is a great match and that that job will last. Um, in fact, there was a recent study done um, across the nation. It looked at all the, the different vocational rehabilitation agencies across the nation. And there's voc rehab agencies in every state and territory. And some actually have more than one. Some have separate programs for individuals who are blind or visually impaired. And then there are general um, uh, rehab um, programs. So there are actually, I think, about 76 different vocational rehabilitation agencies across the nation. And um, so that, that study was looking at the different agencies and, and their success in terms of helping people keep the jobs that they have gotten. And West Virginia ranked number two in the nation at helping individuals keep those jobs. So I, I, you said that we did a really good job, you know, helping you and, and I appreciate Definitely. that. So I, I think that that study you know, just uh, emphasizes that, yes, we, we are doing a good job at helping folks get and keep employment. I think uh, I think that says a whole lot. West Virginia isn't always known for great things, unfortunately, but there are a lot of good things going on and happening here. And, and, and I think uh, rehab uh, is, is a wonderful program. While many adults may be familiar with your programs, in the past couple of years, there has been an emphasis on expanding your programs offered to youth. What can you tell us about that effort? Back in 2014, uh, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act was, was passed. And that a piece of that, uh, that whole legislation was uh, that it mandated vocational rehab agencies, again, rehab agencies across the nation, to really focus on serving youth with disabilities. Um, and, and so, uh, again, West Virginia was ahead of the game. We had uh, West Virginia Division of Rehab. We had already been doing that for years and years and years. We had served uh, transition age youth. We have counselors assigned to every high school in the state of West Virginia. Um, so, we had already been doing that. We were again ahead of the game, but what we did do is we really increased um, services, our, our focus on something called pre-employment transition services. And that's really looking at starting much younger, age 14, um, looking at uh, helping people plan and prepare for employment. And so there are five different components of, uh, or five different services in these pre-employment transition services. And those, those services are job exploration counseling, work-based learning experiences, counseling on opportunities for post-secondary education and training, workplace readiness, um, that, that involves training uh, in social skills and independent living skills, 
And then the fifth um, pre-employment transition service is called, is called instruction in self-advocacy. And that's where we work with individuals to help them be strong advocates for themselves, know their rights, know, know um, how to, to ask for accommodations if they need. But those are very important um, skills that individuals with disabilities need uh, to learn. So we, we focus on, on that. This program is called Legislative Matters Now. And earlier this year, we talked about how important the passage of the Employment First legislation was to people with disabilities. How does that impact your agency? So that's Senate Bill 480, I believe, and it's the Employment yes. First um, Bill. And you know, honestly, I don't think it really impacted our agency. Uh, we have employment first is what we do. Um, you know, our em employment first looks at helping individuals get and keep employment. That is what we call integrative, integrated and competitive employment, that they're working with individuals who have disabilities and don't have disabilities and that they're paid at least minimum wage. And in order for us to, to, um, be to count someone as successfully rehabilitated um, that's the goal they have to be placed in integrated competitive employment making at least minimum wage so we implement the employment first philosophy every single day as we operate uh, this the rehabilitation program again that's what we do is, is employment um, so I think that's where we're at with that. I mean, we, we support that bill. We were involved in, in that, um, but it, that's what we do on, on a daily basis. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, uh, yeah, first of all, thank you for having me here. I always like to talk about, uh, vocational rehabilitation and, and the program. Um, uh, I think that uh, we do a really good job. Um, I think one thing that I would add is, you know, if you are a person with a disability or if you're a person who thinks you have a disability, that's causing you some difficulty to get and keep a job. I, I would really encourage you to reach out to your local office. Uh, or, or go to our website. We have a, a, an 800 number that you can call, or you can you can contact us uh, through our website online. Um, there, there are numerous ways you can, can can get in touch with us. But if if you want, if you're an individual who who thinks you have a disability and is struggling to get and keep employment, uh, and and that's your goal, then I would say reach out, contact us, work with us. Um, you know, it, it is a, a process. It it doesn't happen overnight. We don't have um, a job uh, a drawer full of jobs that we can just pull out and say, you know, hey, here, here go do this job. It, it takes some work. It, it takes a lot of work on, on the client's behalf, the individual with a disability. They have to, you know, really do most of the work. We're our counselors and, and the agency is here to support that individual, but ultimately, you know, they're the ones for working that plan that I talked about, the uh, individualized plan for employment. Um, mm -hmm. They have to get the training. They have to put in the work um, to achieve those goals. Again, we're here to support and help and, and guide uh, the very best we can. Um, but but it takes a lot of work on, on the individual's part. And, you know, they are to be commended. And, you know, every year we have something called an ability works ceremony where we recognize uh, at least six individuals across the state uh, who haven't achieved their employment goals. And those stories are incredible. Um, if, if you're interested in looking at them or watching them, they're all on our website, which is uh, www.wvdrs.org. You can go there. You can watch um, videos of our, our uh, award recipients from several years. We also have our annual report on that website, which kind of outlines, you know, all of our successes, where we're at in terms of, you know, how we um, compare with other agencies across the nation, how many folks we've served, what services we've provided, what types of people we've provided services to, uh, like we look at um, what disability groups, for example, we're serving the most. Um, so there's all kinds of information you can find on our website. And, and most importantly, you can contact us that way if you're trying to get in touch with us to, to get and keep a job. Thank you so much, Richard Ward, for joining us today. I definitely learned a lot about the many services the West Virginia Division of Re 
Rehabilitation Services offers and hope our self-advocates, should they need these services, to reach out and give them a call or visit the website for the nearest location of their Division of Rehabilitation chapter. That's right. They do really good work down there. You can visit the Division of Rehabilitation at www.wvdrs.org and discover all the services they provide as well as locate the nearest one closest to you. I can say that I have used services provided by the Division of Rehabilitation in the past and it helped me land my first job. And they do a lot more than that. They make sure you are job ready. They'll get you clothes. They'll get you shoes. They'll get you like eye appointments. They did everything to help me. So I can say they did a great job. So let them work for you. Indeed, Morgan. And we also want to remind you that if there are any legislative topics you want to be discussed that are confusing you or need a question answered, please reach out to us here at the ARC and we will do our best to assist you. You can call the ARC of the Mid Ohio Valley at 304 422 3151 or you can email me and Morgan personally. My email address is melissa.southhow at peoplefirstwv.org. And mine is Morgan Spicer at the arcmov.org. We would love to hear from you. Coming up is our Advocate in Action segment where we talk to a self-advocate who is using their self-advocacy skills in a positive light either to benefit themselves or the lives around them in the community. And today we are joined by Lindsay Fry, this month's Advocate in Action. Thanks so much, Lindsay, for joining us and welcome to the show. Thank you much for having me. So our first question is, what, is, what has been some of the barriers in your life to live the way you want to? I mean, this can include anything from having a job, policy changes that cause you to lose a job or living where you want to. What would it be some examples of that? What steps did you take to overcome those barriers? I always want a job to prove that I am an independent person who has a disability who can have a job of her own. Eventually, I lost my job because policy in the state took it away from me. It wasn't fair for someone who has skills to have the opportunity to, to have paid wages like everyone else. I'm just like you, and you are just like me. But know that I have come my grief. I decided to volunteer at my church in my community. They noticed I did an amazing job cleaning. They decided to pay me fair wages. It really felt great. Transportation, also a barrier for me to get a job. My parents have a full-time job, and our town has no public transportation. Communication is a barrier. Because people sometimes have a hard time understanding. I have tried to overcome that by reminding myself to speak slowly and clearly. When I make a speech, I have to take time while well, I talk because I tend to put my words all together. When I see a period in a sentence, I pause for a moment. Then I put my head up with full confidence and I tell myself I 
I can do this. And I will conquer. That really helps me overcome my obstacles. My whole life, I have to work a little harder than others to reach my milestone and goals. How long did it take, or has been taking, and how do you keep going when things don't happen immediately? My parents told me that when I was a baby, I was determined to learn new things, and then end world never give up. It is easy to sit back and watch things happen to you. And so I have mastered the new, the new skill. I really try not to let get me down. Although sometimes it can be very discouraging. Why is self-advocacy so important? And what can you share with others about your experience? Self-advocacy means to me going out and getting what I want. It is about knowing the right people to talk to when you have a problem or need supported to do the things you wanted to do. I get sad, I get happy. Sometimes I get excited. Sometimes I get depressed. And sometimes I get anxiety. And that point is, I have emotions like everybody else. It will be a wonderful world if people will realize that having a disability doesn't make you less of a person. Anything else you would like to add? like the boards or committees you have served on and why that is important. I've been honored to serve on various councils and committees. I served on Developmental Disability Council, Council, where I am a vice chairperson. I also am on a member of Statewide Independent Living Council and Armstead Council. I was lucky enough to be able to attend a very informative training last year called Partners in Policy Making. I learned so much about disability laws and how it is so important to always stay involved and advocate for your rights. I highly recommend this training for anyone who gets the opportunity. Thanks so much, Lindsay Fry, for joining us today for our Advocate in Action segment. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Now, just a reminder that if you'd like to be included in a future segment of Advocate in Action and are using your self-advocacy skills in a positive light to not only benefit you or the lives around you, but those in your community, please reach out to us here at the ARC and let us know. You can call the ARC of the Mid-Ohio Valley at 304-422-3151, or you can email me or Melissa personally. My email address is morgan.spicer at thearcmov.org. And mine is melissa.southhall at peoplefirstwv.org. We would love to have you on a future episode. Morgan, I think that just about covers it for 
for this month's episode. We want to thank our guest, Rich, Richard Ward from the West Virginia Division of Rehabilitation Services and Lindsay Fry, our advocate in action for joining us today. It does, Melissa. And I can't wait to do this again next month. But until next time, remember, advocacy matters. And so do you. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Now.